these chemicals in the sunscreen as well as the preservative by itself in the sunscreen can kill the coral in 96 hours to the point of being bleached white. And then as I kept investigating what these chemicals do, I became horrified at how toxic they are to all of us. They're extremely uh, potent endocrine disruptors, very potent anti-testosterones. So they're really harming the fish as well as they're harming our own bodies. Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We're your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hi, everybody. I'm Hilda Labrada Gore, and this is episode 183. Our guest today is Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. Dr. Plourd is a clinical laboratory scientist an NAMS certified menopause practitioner and the author of books on sunscreens. Today, Elizabeth makes a strong case for why we need to second guess our relationship to sunscreen. She breaks it all down for us, how the chemicals in them are affecting the coral in the oceans, marine life, and our own. She goes over several of the wide ranging health effects that can result from its use from leaky gut to hormonal disruption to impaired neurological function and even more. Not only that, but sunscreen does not even necessarily protect our skin from cancer as advertised. So what happens if we decide to pitch it? How can we protect ourselves from sun damage, sunburn, and even melanoma? Well, Elizabeth offers advice for that too. First, a quick word to let you know that the Weston A. Price Foundation has a whole host of resources on our website, including brochures like Nutrition for Mental Health, Myths and Truths About Cholesterol, The Vaccine Flyer, and more. Some of these brochures are as inexpensive as 25 cents a copy, so go to our homepage and order some today. They are succinct and life-changing. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Ancestral Supplements, the makers of gallbladder with ox bile. Based on the ancient wisdom of like supports like, they put New Zealand sourced nose to tail organ meats and bone marrow in convenient gelatin capsules. Order yours today at ancestralsupplements.com. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Dr. Plourd. Thank you so much. We wanted to have you on the show to bring just a taste of what you have to offer to our listening audience today. Now, I know that you were a scuba diver, and didn't you say that you became alarmed by what was happening to the coral in the ocean? Let's start with that story. Yes, I'm very grateful that I learned to scuba dive 50 years ago and got to see the gorgeous coral. It's just, it's breathtaking down there. In fact, I have to remember to keep my mouth shut because it opens up in such awe of the gorgeous, all the different animals. And then I got to see them dying. I got to see a beautiful expanse of coral in 1980 where the cruise ship was saying to all the thousands of people unloading every day, put on your sunscreen, put on your sunscreen. And when I went back in 1985, the entire expanse was totally white. Wait, are you saying that with your own eyes, within five years, you saw the result of the sunscreen polluting all the waters? Yes, I did. Well, I wasn't, I, I didn't know at that time in 1985. Then when I went to swim in Hawaii, and I'd been swimming in Hawaiian waters for over 40 years, I was freezing, absolutely freezing about eight years ago. Goosebumps all over me, forcing myself to stay in because I knew I wasn't there long and I like to swim at least a couple hours a day. And I got out of the water, still goosebumps all over me. And their headline was, are corals dying due to global warming? And looking at my goosebumps, I'm going, this is not warm. This is colder than I've ever felt this ocean in 40 years. And started investigating because I knew that wasn't the problem. And immediately found the evidence, absolute evidence, that these chemicals in the sunscreen, as well as the preservative by itself in the sunscreen, can kill the coral in 96 hours to the point of being bleached white. And then as I kept investigating what these chemicals do, I became horrified at how toxic they are to all of us. And my husband said, why are you writing a book about sunscreens? You're a hormone specialist. Because I had written a book on hormones and consulted around the world on menopause. And I said, but I love the coral. I want to save the coral. I didn't know I had to be a hormone specialist in order to describe 
these chemicals that are being put in these sunscreens. They're extremely uh, potent endocrine disruptors, very potent anti-testosterone. So they're really harming the fish as well as they're harming our own bodies with this potent hormonal effect. And then if they're not potent hormones, they're little metal particles. They're either zinc or titanium oxide. And that is uh, very damaging. They, they bring them down to nano size, micro size, so that you can't see them. They don't look like the white paste that used to go on lifeguard's nose. Now you can't see them at all. But they're so tiny, they get into the body, they get into the brain, the liver. They're found all over the body and they cause extreme harm to the brain, extreme harm to the developing fetus. Uh, they, they see them in the mice the day they're born. And one of the studies that followed them for 21 days found that 1,881 genes were actually altered by the titanium dioxide. Elizabeth, this is alarming information. And I just want to say, hold up, because we've been told for decades to cover ourselves with sunscreen to protect ourselves from the harmful rays of the sun. Is that not true either? That's not true. Yeah, I just, in fact, my first sunscreen book was six years ago. And then when I started looking at 2017 research, I was so horrified that what I had seen uh, the six years previous was absolutely documented and it was even worse effect than I had even seen. And I felt like I had to write another book. I, I started writing and by the time I got to 90 pages of wanting people to know this information, I decided, okay, it's another book. And uh, this book absolutely documents that in the 1980s and 1990s, doctors were saying there was no proof that the sun caused melanoma. And they were saying there was no proof sunscreens would prevent it. And they were absolutely right because melanoma has climbed since sunscreens were introduced. It's become epidemic because the whole concept's wrong. Only 4% of the entire solar spectrum is ultraviolet. Only 4%. That's all you're blocking. And then there's 47% that's near infrared. Those near infrared rays go so much deeper into the skin, into our mitochondria, into really harming things that, uh, that are below our skin and we need to protect. And so if you block the sunburn by putting on the sunscreen, you're actually cutting the red warning light to the dash of your car saying you can sit in the sun longer. So you sit in the sun hours longer than you should because you don't have the red warning light on your skin. And those rays go deeper and they are, are causing the cancers. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm getting this right. So in other words, our sunburn or the skin turning red is a warning sign to us that we need to get out of the sun. And when we don't have that warning sign, it's like we're taping over the red warning light on our dashboard and ignoring the problem. Whereas if we can hang out in the sun for a long time without a burn happening, without sunscreen, then we're doing ourselves a favor. Is that right? Right. Yeah. And, and when your, sun's, your skin starts burning, that's the time to get out of the sun cover up it's enough because we're awesomely made i i i'm a clinical laboratory scientist and i went into the field because i'm in awe of our body we the biochemistry of our body is just absolutely staggeringly amazing so what happens when the solar radiation hits the skin the body automatically brings up the antioxidants because the solar radiation causes oxidation so it brings antioxidants to the skin and when you've used up the antioxidants that are available, that's when you start burning. And it is time to get out of the sun because your body can no longer protect you. And then when you get in the sun gradually and you tan, and they're now saying, oh, tan's bad. No, the tan is the body's natural reaction because the melanin of the tan absolutely is our best solar protector. Melanin is better than any protector for protecting the cells from being oxidized. Wow. So I'm thinking about the wise traditions that the Weston A. Price Foundation lifts up. And these indigenous people around the world were certainly exposed to a lot of sun. However, they were exposing them to themselves gradually so that their bodies would produce the right amount of melanin. And so they would have these lovely tans or deep hue in the skin that would show that they were kind of naturally protected. Is that right? That's correct. And as you go closer to the equator, 
just the natural indigenous people, their skin is darker and darker and darker so that they, their skin is actually naturally protecting them from the solar radiation. The problem for black skin is it provides so much protection when they come up into the northern climates where their body's not getting as much radiation. They have a problem with making enough vitamin D because the solar radiation makes your body, your skin produce vitamin D and the vitamin D is anti-cancer for the entire body. And so they have more problem with vitamin D deficiency because their skin is not as efficient. As, as people moved away from the equator, their skin had to get lighter and lighter to efficiently bring in the sunshine. So basically it's like we've got to flip the paradigm. We've been told all along that the sun causes cancer or melanoma, but you're telling us that actually our bodies can protect us and have cancer-fighting properties, and indeed it's the sunscreen that's putting us at risk. Is that correct? That's correct. It has never been proven, and in fact, just recently there was an article published that they proved that the fatal type of melanoma arises from places in the body that don't see the sun from the bottom of the foot or the anus. Wow, this is just mind-boggling. And yet this information is still out there. This misinformation is still out there. So let's say I'm a dermatologist and I see patients getting melanoma in strange places that don't see the sun. Wouldn't I put two and two together? Two and two together. I, oh, oh, I see what you mean, that they would get that it's not caused by the sun. Yes, a- absolutely. Well, it's just amazing. I When I started reacting to electromagnetic radiation, my symptom was an itchy, bloody rash all over my entire body. And I went to 12 different doctors and I went to the biggest dermatology guru in the area. And when I told him everything I'd been through to try to get rid of the rash, he finally said, well, the answer is ultraviolet radiation because it calms the skin. Yeah. <laughs> And so he had ultraviolet radiation booths, a room of them, uh, where insurance will pay for you stand there surrounded by ultraviolet light. But outside that room, he had a whole display of sunscreens. It, it just didn't compute at all that ultraviolet radiation is good for us. And yet they're selling all these sunscreens that are really extremely harmful. There's one chemical that's extremely anti-testosterone more anti-testosterone than a shot they give prostate cancer patients, totally blocking their testosterone, thinking that that's the the cure for prostate cancer. But it's more anti-testosterone than that, and that's now in almost 100% of Americans' blood because it's in our water. And this is even people who have never used sunscreen. It's in their blood. They've tested them all the way down to six years old. Six years old have this chemical in their blood. Well, if they don't use sunscreen, where are they getting it from? It's in our water now. It's in every lake, every river, ocean, sea, and it doesn't come out in waste treatment plants, and it doesn't come out with water filters. So if we're all exposed to these testosterone blockers, we're putting into jeopardy our health and our sexuality? Absolutely, that's true. And one of the things that happens, the male fetus, it develops testicles within weeks of of the uh, union and starts putting out testosterone because the fetal brain, the male fetal brain has to be based in testosterone for it to develop secondary male characteristics. And they're now not. And we have so many young men saying, I don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. This is part of the gender identity crisis that we're seeing. Yes, I've I've heard that theory before. It, It makes sense. If the toxins in the rivers and the lakes are leading to intersex fish or frogs with genitalia of both genders, then how could that, how could the toxins not be affecting us as human beings as well? Absolutely, and that's what we're seeing. And in fact, I've had autism teachers tell me they have kids in their class with both sets of genitals, the same as the fish. So let's back up for a minute, Dr. Plord, and talk about how We are blocking, essentially we're blocking the very thing our body needs. In other words, when I put on sunscreen, I am blocking out the rays from the sun that are so beneficial to me for my health. For example, aren't we blocking our vitamin D absorption, which I understand it's a huge epidemic across the country that people are vitamin D deficient. It's a problem around the world. That's true. But sunscreens are used around the world. 
so they're in every sea and ocean. So they're they're everywhere. In fact, you know, whatever water they sample, they they see the sunscreen chemicals. So the answer really is to eat a high antioxidant diet because it's all oxidation damage. And so if you eat the food or take supplements and use antioxidants, that's the answer. Coming up, Elizabeth gives specifics about that high antioxidant diet. She also discusses what drives the misinformation we receive, and she even explains why frequent electromagnetic exposure is making us more vulnerable to health problems. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Mike the Heal Your Gut Guy. Are you dealing with digestive issues? Do you react to delicious sourdough bread and other starches? Do you pay dearly when you eat cheap foods? Mike, the Heal Your Gut Guy, also suffered from these issues even when following Weston A. Price dietary principles. Mike will show you the extra steps he took to heal himself and how he helps many others take care of gut issues like Crohn's, colitis, IBS, SIBO, and Candida. Mike will show you how to heal your gut 100% naturally without drugs. The Heal Your Gut YouTube channel page has the videos you need to heal your gut. You don't have to walk a dietary tightrope. Just search for the Heal Your Gut Guy on YouTube. You'll find tons of free information rooted in the laws of Mother Nature and ancestral wisdom. And gallbladder with ox bile by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements offer New Zealand sourced nose to tail organ meats, bone marrow, and gallbladder with ox bile in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Our early Native American ancestors would commonly take a buffalo, cut it open on the spot, and eat the warm liver seasoned with gallbladder and bile. The bile was sprinkled on various organs and glands as a condiment, the way we might use mustard today. Word has it that gallbladder and bile did a whole lot more than just improve the taste. Gallbladder, ox bile, and liver provided concentrated amounts of gallbladder-specific building blocks, bile and liver, that support our biliary tract gallbladder, liver, bile ducts, and they are now absent from the modern diet. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. I did a radio show, and the first caller that called in said, you're absolutely right. I mean, he was just (laughs) so enthusiastic. He says, I work outside all day, eat a high antioxidant diet. I don't wear a shirt and I don't even turn color. And then I talked to a woman who would, who used to burn in the sun and she, cause she was so white and she ate a high antioxidant diet, switched her diet to that. And now she says she's out and doesn't, doesn't bother her at all. Well, tell us what is an antioxidant diet, a high antioxidant diet. So what I did in my sunscreen book I have a whole chapter saying that they're Mother Nature's solar protectors. And that whole chapter, it's it's amazing because it would take me at least three hours to go through what all's in there because they they all work together. All the brightly colored fruits and vegetables, the reds, the purples, the deep leafy greens, C and E and all the spices, uh, it's amazing. I could not believe the amount of research that had been done when I was creating that book six years ago, because it's all there. It, it's garlic, it's astaxanthin is an excellent protector, and you can take that as a supplement. And I've had people say that that's all they take and they're fine out in the sun. So by providing the skin with what it needs to protect itself, you can get the benefits of the solar radiation helping you make your own vitamin D. Now I'm just curious, Are the people who live closer to the equator, is their diet naturally higher in antioxidants? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, looking at the food around the world, as you go closer to the equator, there's all kinds of fruits and vegetables, or fruits mainly, that are all brightly colored, you know, and and they're plentiful. All these uh, mangoes and papayas and guava, they're they're all brightly colored fruits. Uh, So they're naturally eating it, and also coconut's good too, and they have coconut. So it's just their natural diet um, as you get down there closer to the equator. Uh, And it all sounds so delicious. I have berries on my yogurt in the morning, and I just, I'm such a huge fan. Oh, absolutely. The blueberries, the raspberry, all the berries, absolutely. So let's pivot for a moment and go back to the time when you 
were scuba diving and noticing the effect of sunscreens on the coral life. Tell us more about how it's affecting the coral, marine life, and even our own lives as well. So the coral is very sensitive. It's, it's, got, it's got algae. It's a symbiotic relationship between algae and the coral. And the algae absorb the, the sunlight and provide the energy for the coral. But the, the preservative alone will kill the, the algae. And then these toxic chemicals kill it and also help it release viruses that have been innate in it. And then the virus spreads and then kills the whole coral all the way around. So it, it's, it's not only killing that, the zinc and titanium that they're now saying is kid safe. It's absolutely unconscionable to call these kids safe. They're not. They're, they do go into the brain and they do disrupt the development of the brain. In fact, the researchers that are working on that say there is so much damage to the genes in the brain that are permanent that they feel these these kids will be psychotic by the time they're adults. And the parents are being so diligent to follow their doctor's advice and the healthcare practitioners and putting sunscreen on their babies and not even just in the summer, right? But in the winter too, when their kids are going out to play in the park. I know. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. In fact, the titanium dioxide that's in this kid safe stuff for re- reef safe, they call it too. One of the researchers in their articles, they said it's immoral, unconscionable experiment unleashed on the planet, the titanium dioxide. It's just amazing because the fact that it was never proven the sun would cause the melanoma and never proven that the sunscreens would block it. So what they did initially was they blocked the UVB. That was the first sunscreen that came out in 1978. And as melanoma kept increasing, they finally identified that you need the UVA with the UVB. The UVA is what causes the melanoma. So if you block the UVB and allow UVA in, you're going to get more melanoma. So their whole journey has been on the wrong foot all the way along. So I'm thinking of a friend of mine who recently posted a picture of herself on Facebook post-surgery because she had had a big chunk of her nose removed because she had melanoma and she was saying, oh my gosh, I've got to keep putting on that sunscreen. And I know she and her friends are all concerned. What would you say to them, these people who are very much afraid of contracting melanoma? Eat a high antioxidant diet. Clean up the diet. The food really is the answer. It was put out here on this planet to help protect us. And if we eat high antioxidant diet, we're not going to develop the melanoma or the cancers. So, and Melanoma can also have a genetic influence too, but that's not caused by the sun either. It, it's genetic. Okay, so if we're careful about our diet and gradually build up our solar callus, uh, so to speak, by spending time in the sun gradually and developing that, that's not going to make the people in the industry any money, is it? <laughs> no, and it's a multi-billion dollar industry, right. not only here, but throughout Europe. So they're not going to give it up easily and they're going to fight it. And the fight in the medical journals of these doctors who said that their experiments proved that there was no protection for melanoma and no protection for basal cell carcinoma, they were just ostracized in the journals. How dare you? But then when you track down who is funding the doctors who are ostracizing them, they're funded by the cosmetic companies and the pharmaceutical companies that make the sunscreens. Dr. Plord, I have seen this time and time again, that money seems to be the driver, the sole goal of people in power, and the rest of us are like these little pawns, you know, being frightened into following the status quo or obeying whatever the guidelines are, not even realizing that the people in power don't have our best interest at heart. That's true. They don't. And and it's really sad. It, it's very sad. And all of my research, I've uncovered that, you know, women need estrogen. That's my first book. The, the belief that it causes breast cancer is just um, the study that did that should have never been done because it wasn't done with human estrogen or human hormones. It was done with synthetics and the synthetics do cause cancer. There's no two ways around it. So it's just amazing that there's so many misinformation out there. Uh, in fact, my husband came up with it. It's the mass consciousness. It's mass cons that have been 
put out to the masses. Did you say mass con? Right, yeah. yeah. So mass consciousness. And he, so he highlights just those first few letters. That is powerful. And that is why I'm so happy that we have this podcast, that we have the Weston A. Price Foundation, because we're not beholden to the powers that be. We're just a nonprofit trying to get the word out about how to nurture good health. We're not saying that people have to buy a certain product or, you know, or even this information. What we're saying is, here is information for your consideration. This is the day and age of the democratization of information. So we're getting the word out. We have experts like you on this show, and then people can make their own informed decisions. Absolutely. And the other thing that really concerns me is that the electromagnetic radiation is putting holes in every cell membrane. Everybody is having their cells compromised. We need a protective membrane around every cell to keep in what needs to stay in there and let out what needs to get out and not allow harmful things in. It's also putting holes in all our protective barriers, the the blood-brain barrier, our intestinal lining. That's the food allergies today because our intestinal lining is like a sieve now. And so the food gets into the blood. Our body says, gee, this is foreign and starts making antibodies. But it's also putting holes in the placenta. So all these toxins can get into our babies while they're being formed. And it's creating havoc for the next generation. When you say electromagnetic radiation, what are you referring to? Uh, the cell phones, the Wi-Fi, the iPad. You can't get away from it anymore. It, it's coming off the televisions. I started reacting to electromagnetic radiation. And one of the symptoms that I had was my skin would open up and hemorrhage from our TV set. It actually would open up in these four-inch long lines and just hemorrhage. And uh, we got rid of our TV until I found the things that helped me save my life. It helped me get back to work, get back to the computer, finish writing my books, because everybody's being impacted and they just don't know it. Everybody has a symptom from electromagnetic radiation. They just don't recognize it. They might have this little itchy skin, so they just go to the drugstore and get cortisone cream. Or they get a headache and they think, oh... I've just been staring at the screen too long and they're not realizing it is the electromagnetic frequency that's getting to them. So Dr. Plord, how does this relate to what we were talking about a moment ago, the sunscreens and the EMFs? In other words, how are they tied together? So, well, the body's being so compromised by the electromagnetic radiation, it's no longer functioning with its protections in place. It no longer has a balanced immune system because it throws off our TH1, TH2, TH17. It, it throws off our immune system. It's no longer in balance. So we can't fight bacteria and parasites and, and things like that. We're reacting more to mold because our body just uh, is so out of balance from the radiations. And so anything that's toxic, like the sunscreen chemicals, have free access they can go anywhere in our body and cause harm. It's like we're letting our guard down, right? I think Sally has likened our bodies to palaces or fortresses, and it's like the bricks are falling out. And so, yeah, our bodies are compromised by these non-native electromagnetic frequencies, and we don't have the proper nutrition to shore up our bodies. And so these toxic chemicals and the sunscreens can just have a, have a field day in our bodies, compromising our health. Absolutely. And so our whole home, you know, the complex fluorescent light bulbs are just so damaging to us. You know, we've kept all our incandescent and we will not let go of them. We bought a lifetime supply because there's no way I will sit in a place with complex fluorescent bulbs or fluorescent. One of the symptoms that I had before I started wearing what I found that worked for me was my whole ceiling is fluorescent. It's a whole bank of fluorescent lights. And I couldn't stand and do dishes with just a short sleeve shirt on. My skin would actually burn like a sunburn from the fluorescent lights. Wow. And most of us are not seeing those kind of dramatic results on our bodies, but there's still stuff happening deep inside on a level that we can't see, isn't there? Right. We're being oxidized. Both the solar and the EMF radiation causes oxidation, causes the same kind of damage, harms our mitochondria. We are seeing so many mitochondrial deficiency diseases today because our mitochondria just 
they're being put out of commission. They really are by both of these assaults. So we really need to look at this and do whatever we can, you know, reduce your exposure to the EMF. Um, We don't need to be in constant contact. It's very damaging for our kids to be around the cell phones and the iPads. It just, I just cringe when I see parents propping their baby up in the restaurant in front of an iPad because their brains are smaller, more fluid, more rapidly dividing DNA, much more susceptible to the damage from these radiations. And we're not saying we have to abandon all technology and go live in a cave somewhere, but there are ways to be smart about how we handle technology in our homes. Um, We could have our computers wired, for example, limit screen time for our children, and so on. Absolutely. And I would love to create a toy company of really interesting toys that kids would get involved with rather than needing their cell phone or iPad or games on these things because they really need to, they need to be outside. They need the sunshine. They need the grounding from, uh, you know, being on the earth in order for them to develop healthily. I love it, Dr. Plord. Start your toy line. (laughs) Seriously, that sounds amazing. Hey, if Doug and Melissa can do it, you can do it too. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Well, (laughs) we need to, we absolutely have to because our, our kids, you know, they're not, It causes mental instability, the radiations. It really destroys our neurotransmitter balance in our brain. And so, you know, nobody's really acting like normal. And, you know, we're seeing it everywhere. And these poor children, they they don't know. You know, it if you've got a child who's been compromised by the sunscreen chemicals in their body as well as the electromagnetic radiation while they're developing their brains aren't wired the same. And so it doesn't take much for them to be out of control. The the autistic kids flip out of control then when they're exposed to the electromagnetic radiation, but they don't understand it. You know, I, I watched a nonverbal autistic kid and there was a huge amount of radiation coming from the hotel computer bank. I don't know exactly what was behind the wall, but I could feel the pressure on my body. And this poor kid, I could just watch him he he was he melted into a total uh, hysterical breakdown, but he couldn't tell his mother and father, I am feeling all this pressure on my body and on my brain. And so we really need to look at the fact that we don't need Wi-Fi in all the buildings. We need to have places where there's no radiation. Once smart meters went into America, I saw the shift. I had Become hearing from the people in Canada who got the electrical smart meters way before we did, and they called and said how sick they were and begging for help. And then, being a menopause practitioner, I started hearing from all these people in the San Francisco Bay Area, all within weeks of each other, all saying the same thing: "I've got these headaches. I can't sleep. I'm so tired. And I'm so irritable, and I must be going into early menopause." But they were only 41, 42, 43. They were all too young for menopause. And I have a six-page profile. I have them fill out. And when I looked at it, I'm going, this is not hormones. These women are not menopausal. So my research brain, I talked to each one in depth. What's new? What's different? The common denominator was the electrical smart meter going on their residence within weeks or months of these symptoms. And then when I looked up the biochemistry of why they cause the headaches, they, they cause the headaches because they clump the red blood cells. The red blood cells can't deliver oxygen. And it's the same kind of high altitude headache, not enough oxygen in the air. And the insomnia, it, it destroys melatonin. So we don't have melatonin to drop into a deep sleep, deep reparative sleep. And then it destroys our neurotransmitters, so we're irritable. And it destroys our ATP. It destroys our gasoline that comes out of our mitochondria. And so we're tired. So all of the symptoms made sense. And then when I started researching the total impact of these electromagnetic radiation, I just it causes so many symptoms that people are seeing today. It's been fun doing lectures over the last six years to medical doctors because six years ago they were kind of like ho hum, you know, not paying much attention. But the last few years, as I put up the screen that lists all the symptoms that includes heart palpitations and ringing in the ears and dizziness and vertigo and blurred vision and brain fog, nosebleeds, when I list all those, they sit forward in their seat. You could just see them look forward. 
and then they come by our booth and say, thank you, you're helping me understand the patients I haven't been able to help. Wow, well, you've given us a lot to think about and so much to consider in terms of how to mitigate the effects of EMFs and uh, really pay attention to our surroundings and what we're putting on our bodies in terms of sunscreen that could be affecting our health. So thank you so much for all of this valuable information. I want to ask you now the question I often pose at the end, Dr. Plourd, if the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? Change the diet to include all the antioxidants and to realize that you need them. They work synergistically together. And so you need a complex of the antioxidants, not just one or two. So it really needs to be your diet and make it organic because of the pesticide problem too. Yes, organics are a little more expensive, but it's well worth it. And I tell people to get their smart meters off their houses, the electric, gas, and water, and they have to pay so much a month. And I tell them, it's the best health insurance you can buy. Excellent advice. Well, thank you for your time today. It's been a wonderful conversation. I so appreciate you and appreciate being able to get this information out there because it, it's hard to know all this and know the whole world doesn't know yet. Well, we're getting it out. One podcast, one article, one conference at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Our guest today was Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. For more on the topic, visit her website, sunscreensbiohazard.com. And I'm Holistic Hilda. Find me on Instagram at Holistic Hilda. For the complete show notes for this and all podcast episodes, just go to our website, westonaprice.org. And that's it. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. Thanks for listening today. We have all kinds of resources to support you on your health journey. On the Weston A. Price Foundation website, you'll find podcasts, blogs, articles, and brochures related to just about any health topic you can imagine. You can also find a local chapter to help you discover sources of real, organic food in your area. And you can become a member to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism. Visit WestonAPrice.org for all this and more. And remember that the Wise Traditions podcast is available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.